put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Dexter Series Review Miami, drenched in Latin culture. Dexter Morgan is a vigilante who kills murderers and rapists, especially those who slip through the cracks of the legal system. He gets hunches about people that he that, that may have done something violent and that's where his seeking of the of his targets begins he has a ritual to his killings in part to protect protect himself from being found out and he does also keep a trophy, a blood slide of each of his victims. Killing makes helps him focus, relieves stress. He sets up he sets up a secluded kill room where he straps the target naked to a table or other horizontal surface in plastic wrap and the, the room covered in plastic wrap so as to avoid DNA trace. He drugs them before putting them on the table, wakes them back up, and shows them images of their victims. And the kill room itself, or the method uh, that Dexter uses to kill the, the monster, is often poetic or ironic. And there are some really cool, memorable kills and crime scenes. He prefers his kills up close, a lot of bludgeoning and stabbing, no guns. After he's killed someone, he cuts them into pieces and dumps them off the bay, far enough that they won't be found, but also not so far away that they that it would take him too long to get back. Now, so this is obviously a bit of a power fantasy. You know, we take some enjoyment out of seeing this guy kill and get away with killing these really bad people, supposedly really bad people. And the, the show does also go into why we might want to see something like that. And it's somewhat like seeing you know, 47 of the Hitman franchise. Now, the a season might explore Dexter's past. You might find someone similar to him that might help him conquer what he calls his dark passenger, his need to kill. You know, maybe make it more convenient for him to kill a romantic interest, a friend, perhaps a nemesis. And each season has its own storyline and its own themes. Often, a season will see, you know, the introduction of an additional character who may be a killer, a victim, you know, a threat to Dexter. Now, it's not quite as unpredictable as I hear Game of Thrones is as far as who will die. And the, you know, a, a season might explore, is this a character that Dexter could share his secret with? Could he share it with the world? Will he always be able to hide who his, you know, his true nature? And a season will also usually have them hunting a criminal and or a serial, you know, or possibly a serial killer. Now, things do carry over from, you know, between seasons. Each season is a chapter of an overall story with its own strands. 
now. The and and the focus can be really tight, it, you know, especially within specific episodes, but some seasons as well, very tightly focused. Now, a season might have, you know, a, a victim of De of Dexter's might be looked into by the cops you know, before or after letting him see how close he is to being found out. Maybe new things will come to light about the the person he has or is going to kill. Now, while the show does focus on the homicide department of Miami Metro, we do see some other crimes being investigated and you know it's in some ways like you know CSI, NCIS, other alphabet shows now there is not a crime solved every episode and actually come to think about it, it might be only homicide that they solve Any, anyway yeah, not not a new crime assault every episode, you know, nor is there a new crime per episode. And you, you really see that the job takes its toll on the family of, yeah. And, you know, there, there are some of the usual tropes of, you know, they don't want the FBI coming in on their turf and yeah now Dexter's double life sometimes mean he has to lie to the face of loved ones and you know he has to split his time between loved ones and killing now guest characters tend to develop regular characters their relationships and the overall plot now, if, if Dexter is caught somewhere as he is looking into someone or the like, he often pretends to belong. Now, the dynamic characters and their relationships grow over the course of the show. And when something that the audience already knows is told to a character who didn't already know, we often get a new perspective on this, you know, this thing that we did uh, did otherwise already know. Now, at times in this, characters will discuss lies and secrets, you know, in public places, probably to avoid, you know, too many scenes just taking place in these same dark, secluded rooms. Now, this is based on the book series, and I have not read any of the books. Now, seasons one and four are amazing. Like, you know, watching seasons two and three, they didn't quite live up to the very high standard that the first one set. But then the fourth one met and exceeded that standard. And, yeah, amazing. The show never does get quite as good afterwards, but I don't think any of the seasons are truly bad. But, yeah, as, as others have already said, the first four seasons are better than the last four seasons. Now. And the... I'd say the fifth season might be the least compelling and the last three are about even they they all have interesting elements at least now the in a lot of this a character might seem you know really good or really bad and then there's a twist that shows that the opposite is actually true and this tends to make sense the, you know, you, you see these previous scenes in a different perspective, but then you all also realize 
right, I didn't actually see this happen, so I suppose it didn't necessarily. Now, excuse me, at the same time, it does not rely too much on twists or fake outs to keep you watching. The, the, the showrunners managed to keep the show fresh where it could have gotten repetitive or predictable. The most of the main characters are like, you know, law enforcement, family of law enforcement, some criminals, some victims of, yeah. Now, as such, some of the characters might just rise in rank along the way. Now, no character in the show is purely seen in relation to Dexter, especially true of main characters. They do have stories of their own and growth. No, no character is just a foil or an ally to Dexter. Now, this explores what, you know, what makes a person good, you know, what is normal, and yeah, exploring different monsters, different uh, types of psychopaths. Now, it doesn't try too hard to make the cops quirky, which it's been a long time since I watched NCIS. I, I'm not sure I watched past the first four seasons or something, but in that, yeah, it could sometimes try really, really hard to make them quirky. At its core, this is a psychological thriller. Now, some characters might just start to suspect Dexter of something because, you know, he'll disappear for long periods of time. He doesn't really, you know, he can't always explain why and, you know, maybe he behaves in a strange way sometimes. Now, a new season might have characters in a situation you really didn't expect. And the the acting on all of them is great. And they really have to run the gamut of emotions and, yeah, situations you see them in. Now, to get into the characters specifically, Dexter Morgan, he is meticulous, he has trouble socializing, he'll take things literally or have trouble with nuance and body language and the like. He, you know, he has some issues with empathy. There is some, you know, some elements of autism or Asperger, you know, and he, he'll have a detached or at least different perspective on aspects of humanity. It's as if Data, Odo, Tuvok, or Spock was the lead of the show and a serial killer. He works as a blood spatter analyst and he, he, he really hates when things are out of his control. Now, his sister Deborah Morgan actually adopted sister. She works in Vice but really wants to work homicide. She has a huge heart and she loves Dexter and he, you know, she is often helped by the hunches he has in, you know, yeah, figuring out, get, getting to the bottom of the case. Now, as she is one of the only women we see on the show, in a male-dominated field, you know, she she's masculine and she tries but usually fails to hide her insecurities, her indecisiveness, and all of her emotions. And she'll usually try to hide it via an obscene, pun intended, amount of swearing. And so some of it gets kind of awkward. Now, since her father and Dexter's stepfather, Harry, favored Dex. What she doesn't know is that that was to channel his urges to kill. So, you know, Deborah spent her whole life 
trying to get her father's acceptance. And, you know, that's part of why she's a cop. And she's, she's just a bit of a tomboy. Now, Harry Morgan was a hero cop. And though he is dead when the show takes place, you know, other than some flashbacks, he'll show up in person to discuss, you know, exclaim pride, disappointment, or argue with Dexter from his perspective, and Dexter might ignore him, listen to him, you know, yeah. And, yeah, literally, the actor will appear in those scenes, and we, we the audience, realize that what we're seeing is only taking place inside Dexter's mind, but it really helps. They can play off each other, and, you know, it's not just a lot of voiceover. Now... But yeah, there, there are also some flashbacks that provide background. And both Harry and Dexter's voiceover do sometimes provide exposition, you know, explaining what we're seeing and or what Dexter is thinking. Now, Harry created the code, or Harry's code, which helps Dexter avoid getting caught, and that's kind of, yeah, that's, that's the way he, you know, he ensures that the people he kills are monsters, and that, yeah, there is, they, they built the ritual somewhat, the, the different elements of the code. Now, yeah, the, you know, the, the show thus explores the, you know, a, a father's influence and, you know, molding of, of their offspring, you know, you know, when, when to rebel and, you know, the, the realization that your parents aren't right all the time. And James Romar dies in a lot of what he's in, so much so that in this they get it out of the way before the pilot is set. I, I like to think that Samantha Jones screwed him to death. Can't get enough of that snoo snoo. That brings us to Dokes, who is a hard ass. He's former special ops, and he's the only cop at Miami Metro who suspects Dexter and yeah it makes it very difficult for Dexter when yeah when trying to hide from Dokes. La Guerta who is power hungry, manipulative, very ambitious, she plays politics like a pro and she's really good with the press. She's also you know, a woman in a male-dominated field, and it's made her very dedicated. Masuka, who's perverted and says some really sick stuff, often sexual, he's a fellow lab geek. Now, Batista is very honorable, a Catholic, huge heart, and, you know, his marriage somewhat strained because of the job. He loves his little girl, Auri, and loves spending time with her. Now, Rita Bennett, who is emotionally scarred from her ex-husband, Paul, who is the father of her two children and a junkie. And, you know, in spite of this, her character is not just a victim. It, it can be really frustrating in fiction to see a character who's just suffering and you know, stuck in this really bad situation. We want to see growth, we want to see change, and yeah, the, the show really avoids those pitfalls. Now, and Dexter's great with her kids, and she's a great mother, very protective, loving, and instilling great morals 
in her son and daughter. Now, because of her ex, she can't get intimate with Dexter, which he's just fine with. He, you know, in the past, when he's had, you know, had more intimate relationships, in, her, in his own words, they see his emptiness. Now... And Matthews, the chief of police, who's very protective of Deb because he worked with her father, and he supports both Morgans very much. And it appears that Jack Malloy has grown past his need of floppy, though, you know, that little thing is probably a better role model than Harry and could definitely outpur Masuka. And a few seasons in, we are introduced to Quinn, who is very charming, but not really mature, not necessarily the most dependable, and you know, very much loves the fast life. Now, the show is very tense, crazy fast-paced, addictive, dramatic, scenes just turn on a dime and you know you often find yourself after an episode ends just you know oh just watch one more you know just to see what happens next and yeah now the there, there's a ton of character growth plot developments and yet it isn't exhausting or forced and you know, this fast-paced is almost always a good thing. You know, it's it's better when it relates directly to the season that it's in, and it's obviously the best when it relates to the show as a whole. That is part of why season one and four are as amazing as they are. Now, a lot is communicated in very little, with very little. This is the only cable show I've watched. Now, in Dexter's voiceover, he will provide commentary on life, mankind, culture, you know, with a lot of black comedy and his perspective. And he narrates a bit, a lot. And, you know, he will he will re respond honestly to someone in what he's thinking but not you know yeah he deadpans a lot and as much as I hate to quote the amazing atheist this is one thing where he is correct Dexter will think one thing and say the opposite now a lot of lines have two different meanings, so the characters kind of code speak, and you know, people who just overhear it might, you know, take it as something completely different. You know, it sounds normal enough. And characters can go from normal to psychotic in just, you know, less than a second. And Dexter gets very intimate with his victims you know, able to discuss life and big issues, you know, in the short time between waking them up and killing them, because they know that he kills and he knows that they kill. They, to an extent, are in this, they're in similar situations, you know, and they are, you know, their situation with, as much as it involves killing, is always different than his and thus he can say well why did you make this choice when I made that choice and would it would it be interesting for me to make that choice or you know saying I'm not like you now Dexter will often look stuff up on one of his laptops you know or computers in general you know the, the one at his job the one at home and things like this and when someone comes by quickly you know click away from it and you know maybe close the, the you know when it's a laptop closely you know which you know clearly the original intent of the boss key 
and he'll also spy on others from his office, seeing who comes and goes in the station. Now, some characters, when they see Dexter's dark passenger, reacts in an interesting or different way to it. He will sometimes plant or hide evidence to, you know, make sure that he gets to kill the criminal. And he will break into people's work or home and, you know, using his lock picking tools and look for evidence of, you know, yeah, point, either clearing them or pointing to their guilt. Now, Dexter can get incredibly, incredibly lucky and writing can get really, really convenient. Like if he's, you know, when he is breaking into someone's place, you know, he's usually not spotted by a neighbor, people are seldom home, you know, and even when that is the case, it works out. Now, and sometimes characters die really suddenly and, and or at an ideal time for the script and the characters, you know, resolving conflict in a very easy way like that. Some characters will reveal deep truths to others when it doesn't really make sense. Now, the the seasons and episodes feel planned. There's very little filler or retconning or in general just bad continuity. It you know, it seldom feels like they're making anything up as they go along. This explores whether we maybe all have a drive towards violence. An episode will usually last, run at about 50 minutes. And, you know, this includes the previously on. And both episodes and previously on can vary by several minutes. And this allows the showrunners to, you know, where... where say Alex might have you know one or two minutes of you know varying length and one or two minutes of previously on and yeah it gives the showrunners more creative control thus lessening filler and making an episode as long as it should be now there are not very many or very long fights whether gun or melee there are some chases, but mostly it's tense, but yeah, not an awful lot of action compared to, say, NCIS, which is also a more clear-cut procedural than this. And as with other procedurals, you do have to wonder why there are so many, you know, so many criminals, in this case killers, and, you know, leading to so many cool and interesting crime scenes and in this case even so many serial killers just in Miami. Now the production values are very high and there's some great DVD extras including interviews, commentary tracks, behind the scenes footage. Now some you know they, they do sometimes repeat or extend a plot in order to you know, fill out episodes. Now, Dexter ensures the guilt, which is... Yeah, actually... Yeah, before I get too into that, this is the part where I get to, into arguments against aspects of the show, and yeah, this is the divisive part. So, yeah, strap in. Dexter ensures that they are that, that someone is guilty before he kills them, thus dealing with one of the main arguments against vigilantism that you might kill someone innocent. But the other you know, some of the other issues are explored. You know, is it maybe more revenge? Is it a need more than justice? You know, but the show does kind of say that the show is mostly on Dexter's side. It's, you know, yeah, he, he usually kills the right person and it's, you know, someone who really did some really awful things. And 
yeah, you know, in real life, killing the leader of, you know, a gang, for example, can just create a power vacuum, and you might end up with someone even worse in his place. You know, it can really escalate the conflict and the violence in that situation. And, you know, no matter how many people, you, you're not going to be able to stop all of them that, you know, as, as long as there is still someone in that situation, which I'll get into, into shortly. And, you know, there's the obvious thing, you know, killing someone to show that killing is wrong is, is you know, a bit self-contradictory, and that killing those who kill or rape or the like is treating the symptom, not the illness. No, if you should kill someone, and I wholeheartedly believe that you should, and I'm just kidding, and making a reference that 99% of the audience will not get. No, it's the way you improve the world is not to kill so-called evil people. I, I hold, you know, I'm of the opinion that no person or group is evil. Actions can be evil, but people choose to do good or evil actions. Now, but, but yeah, the, you know, solving criminal behavior and the like is social issues. You know, you, very few would want to do, you know, yeah, want, want to engage in crime. Again, not everyone. You cannot eliminate. There, there will be some, but if we eliminate all but the ones who just do choose to be criminals in spite of everything we do to try to prevent them, then the cops can focus entirely on them. And yeah, it's about giving poor people a wage that they can thrive on. And at, at the very least, a a properly livable wage, you know, so that they're not choosing between, you know, do we go to bed hungry or, you know, do I pay the electric bill or do I buy enough dinner, you know, and ensuring that everyone has an education, making sure that the law is dependable, you know, when people grow up in a good home, their their parents thriving and the you know they they realize that authority can at least somewhat be trusted and if something awful happens they can go to the authorities about it then very few people actually do become criminals but obviously if you know again not saying kill anyone but if there is someone who is more to blame for some of this, it would more be people who who are to blame for these social situations, you know, with like, you know, we're talking, it's kind of a cliche today, but yeah, you know, bank CEOs and the like, people who make money by ensuring that others don't really make a lot of money or don't get to keep the money they make and you know yeah this this kind of thing these kinds of people and again I'm not if, if you just fire them and you don't do anything else then someone else just comes along and does the same thing we need to first and foremost change the laws so that yeah people are able to get by you know not necessarily like coddled or taken fully care of or the like and yeah so the show has a lot of gore and violence and it can get really brutal all of that makes sense it also they also swear a lot and there's a lot of nudity and sexuality and this at least in part is clearly because they can and it's a way to get more viewers you know the I mentioned before Deborah's swearing gets really awkward. It, you know, it, it feels like they have a quota for the swearing at times, especially with Deborah. And yeah, you know, 
nudity and sexuality and such you know there are a lot of prostitutes and other sex workers there are a lot of strip clubs and such I hear it's similar on Game of Thrones and one of the worst things is that a lot of women are sexualized even when it doesn't make sense like they might be attacked or even dead and they're still sexualized and that's yeah that's a bit disturbing and yeah you know with how how they're all sexualized it's kind of like two on two and a half men except here it does also happen with the men sometimes you know and on two and a half men which I should again say I haven't watched past I don't know season three or four but yeah you know on that when I watched at least if there was a you know a female guest star you could be pretty sure one way or another she would be sexualized even if it's like a really like a famous actress or something but yeah and in this you know of course the nudity you know it may for some of the more you know some of the stars of the show some of the people who have better contracts it might you know stop right before the nipple and such which again may not be you know which may be whether or not it really makes sense and a lot of women die on the show and or show up dead and it's clearly just to get sympathy from us these women don't have stories they're not treated as individuals and I suppose in closing I should say the finale is okay. It's not particularly good. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.